Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Alan Wake. Uh, we are here at the title screen because I, I thought that I might want to jump into episodes here to see if we can get it to replay the um, the little intro that it does at the start of like a chapter where it does like previously on Alan Wake, but I feel very uncomfortable about this that it might go ahead and like not save the progress or whatever. And my producer doesn't remember. Uh, she just always hit continue game. So I think that we're going to continue that to avoid losing any sort of progress. Um, also, very quick note, uh, we've made some subtle changes to the microphone. I'm not sure if this sounds better or worse. If you'd let us know in the comments compared to the previous episode, uh, we're just trying to make sure that it is as nice a viewing experience as possible. Um, so I've got some messages coming in. Okay, let's jump in, jump in. Uh, yes, Steam Cloud Alan Wake. What he was all in college. Groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. I'm trying to remember, are, do we have any clarity on where he is? I know that we woke up from a nightmare. The door was locked. Mm. I was a prisoner here. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. Uh, hello to Pluzma and Bron Bron is my dad. I hope you're this having a corridor is great for evening. Patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. I don't usually pause during, you know, gameplay or whatever, but I did want to say uh, Pluzma has uh, said in chat that, that they're sick. I hope you feel better. Um, I've been desperately trying to avoid getting a terrible uh, cold myself. I feel like everybody I know has been sick this season, so I hope you start to feel better, and if we can help make your 1.35 a.m. pass a little bit more brightly, I'll be happy to help. Oops. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Uh, 
Kluzma is recommending Heavy Rain. Yes, Heavy Rain is actually a lot of fun. It's a very good game and one that we have played already, though not on stream. So if people are interested in hearing my take on the story, we could probably do it. get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, Hartman obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into the palms of my hands to stay you focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Uh, so Plusum is asking where Come we are on. in the story. Let's this is the inside. very beginning of chapter four. So I don't know how long the game is. But it's Here's a... the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. I'm gonna go steal your coffee. I'll be right back. Yeah, I, I'd estimate this is scary, midway scary. to the game, but I don't know how many episodes there actually are. <laughs> Emerson. I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video Elbow games. Strike. Ooh, it's yeah. trash, uh, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Hmm. So really like any Come subtlety as to whether or not we are supposed to find uh, Mr. Hartman here a trustworthy character has just been really pitched way out the window with his weird out of place diatribe against video games. Uh, let's see, welcome to Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and or periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patients' need for privacy and personal space, especially when they're engaged by their creative processes. Oh, wow. Chapter 2. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems, and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement Therapy TM and its sister method, the flow trademark, work best when you are actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. Yo, I don't think my HMO covers bullshit. My rheumatism's killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers. Odin and Tor. They had a... How oh, should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They are well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. 
I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. But have they read all the oh, short Alan, stories by Lurin McCready? I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah. He raises your requirements, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. Okay, time out, just because, like, the dialogue never stops. Hello to Fox Eyes and Fee Crest. Um, also, although this particular segment does sort of have that, oh, are you crazy or not feel that you get from the Outlast games, Alan Wake is actually, like, we recently got a chance to watch more than Amiya play all the way through both Outlast uh, and Outlast 2, as well as the Whistleblower DLC. Those games are significantly darker and more depraved in a really entertaining way, uh, whereas Alan Wake is much more of a straight sort of uh, adventure game with horror like a horror theme to it. Um, so I think that you'd find them pretty far apart on your spectrum of um, video games. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any books Okay, so it turns out that we yeah, saw uh, this book no. in Alice's so luggage. I'm only just now farm. recognizing Our that. So apparently formula. she was a fan of his no, from before we needs. arrived. And actually, now that I think about it, I think he announced that. Who jumpy? You know how they got. Gotcha. The docs got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. You know what? It suddenly occurred to me that this reminds me of. Have you guys seen uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare? Where, you know, and this is given away in the trailers and all, so I really don't feel like it's a spoiler to say that the... Hartman the, had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Okay. Uh, the premise of the movie is that the people responsible for the original Nightmare on Elm Street need to make a movie because Wes Craven is sort of being... Uh, hey, um, hey. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give psychologically the driven shot, to huh? do it? Typewriters in your room. And that's sort of what those little um, video vignettes the are reminding me of. The blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I 
didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Investigate racket. Wait, wait, whoa. Oh, I almost missed this. Uh, and also, hello to He Who Dies, uh, who is also a fan of New Nightmare. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. Now, are we? Well, yeah, the, the atmospherics in Alan Wake are really well done. And when you consider this is this is a game from like the early 2000s, I want to say. I, I don't know the exact date, but I want to say this is like Sinclair looked 2004. That wasn't a love tale. The crazy old fart hit her hard. If she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I could get the key to the office room from Sinclair. Come okay, I, I'm getting a withering look from my super, uh, from I not supervisor. His office. <laughs> he had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where you'd be Maybe keeping you them. Come out and beat our uh, my producer. And Apparently, it is way, way, way later than 2004. So disregard that. But it, this is an older game, is the point, and the PC version still looks real sharp. Uh, wait, where is Hartman's office? Over here? Yes. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. Uh, he Who Dies is uh, saying um, May 2010, which is way more appropriate than my guess of 2004. I'm going to pretend that I was thinking of the month uh, May is five, though, so it doesn't quite work. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Hold on, that's not... He Who Dies is saying that it came out on May 4th, 2010, <laughs> which is a hell of a coincidence. Oh my god, I think I might be a character in Alan Wake's story. It's all the tape said they coming true. Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties. Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work, well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems. If you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. 
Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Okay, so we're learning a couple things. A, the phone call that, Al that Alan got from Alice in the previous episode was spliced together from this thing. That's what he just said. And then B, this whole trip to Bright Falls was actually a setup by Alice to get um, Alan Wake into therapy. Which, I mean, to be fair, he probably does need. Also, we're going to skip right past the part of that recording where Alice was talking about how she'd actually prefer it if her husband was beating her because it then, at least then, it would lead to a conversation that he couldn't just walk away from. We're just going to take that part of that tape and put it over there and not talk about it because I... Whoa. <laughs> Barry? Ow! About time! Barry, man, I'm glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no. The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman that son of a bitch who tells me you're here and I should come pick you up but when I got here two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there what's what's with the cutout I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us that'll teach her yeah that's a harsh punishment what come on pal we gotta get going but why did he bring it here <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna grab that thermos, Barry, and we're gonna be on our way. Barry. Barry! Ugh. Okay. I, again, he lugged that here just to show Alan Wake that he had stolen it from the diner because the waitress drugged him. Oh, oh forget it. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back Shh, into the- Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea- Hartman, what... shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just- Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. So for at least one moment in the game, Alan Wake and I are in perfect sync. The dark presence will be on me in a moment. I had to find a way out. Uh, not going in there. Wait, no, Alan. Press A to unlock. Okay, that doesn't look good. Okay, can't go out that way. Nope. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves out of my way. Oh, generator. How do we get upstairs? Yes.
Okay, I don't think I need to do anything with this uh, floodlight. Um, yeah, to answer Kluzma's earlier question, I am in the same time zone as Feecrest and Fox Eyes, so... Mm, okay, can't go through the poltergeist door. Ow! Hold on a second. Ah! Okay, hold on. Escape the clinic. So I can light a flare. Ah, yes. Right. Wait. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. And he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe. Or worse, it was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. So, is Hartman, like, stealing the creative output of his patients? Or is it, like, really... Like, is he literally stealing like, their imagination or something bizarre like that? Door? No. Sorry, I'm looking at that globe. Is that gonna like smash down the door? No? Well, it wants to. Alright, come here, Globy. Come on. Ha-ha! Oh, do I have to, like, dodge out of the way? Play I'm gonna, like, bring the globe out here. Try to trick it to hit the door. Come here. Uh, I don't have a red cape to wave at you, but... I have a good feeling about that. I'm here. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Oh God! Look at the house, Al. Look out! leaving. Uh, Brown Brown is asking about a earlier comment that the amount of swearing on the stream tends to be dependent on the game and yeah you know yeah to a to a large extent uh, I would say that that's particularly true when we do something that is more geared towards kids like uh, in Minecraft story mode uh, we have the entire adventure up and i was very very careful of both language and ideals because i knew that that's a series that younger viewers might watch this one is a little bit darker but neither is it oh hold on you know it's not as dark as we've seen for sure okay no alan hold on not fair Controller went down.
Okay, spooky tree. I'll say one thing for Barry. He takes this stuff in, str in stride. Me? If I went to pick up my client and I heard him go into a hedge maze and lots of gunshots going off, I'm a little bit worried about it, but not Barry. Okay, we're just gonna... Yep. I did not want to burn that last flare, but here we are. Yeah, so this is the part that I was uh, describing to Pluzma as being somewhat different from anything that happens in Outlast. That was my last bullet. <laughs> we made it count, but maybe not enough. Oh, no. Hold on. P. Crest is saying... So, first of all, uh, who is it? Bron Bon is saying that uh, he's pissed. Hopefully not too badly. And then P. Crest is saying that I passed a manuscript page on the spooky tree. So, I... Oh, wait. Well, we found another one here, too. Hartman hurried down the corridor. He had disliked leaving Wake when he was surely at his most susceptible to therapy. But this was not an ordinary storm. Wake had been riding, and he had woken something up in the depths of the lake. Now, it was coming for him. Hartman had naturally prepared for a situation like this. The idiot brothers would keep Wake distracted while Hartman double-checked everything, just to be sure. Let's try to make our way as quickly as possible back to the spooky tree. Of course, it's a maze, so it might take a second. So, if if anybody didn't know, the key to making it through a, a maze like this is just keep making left turns or right turns. Either one, it doesn't matter. But just consist... Well, I found some ammo, so that's worth it. Um, if you just methodically thank you, Feecrest. Hold on. I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-side stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. Yeah, in a situation like this, and this is a great rule for video games. It doesn't always work if the, you know, world is transforming around you like Visage or Outlast 2 or something like that. But as a general rule, you get stuck in a maze like this. All you do, watch this, you just keep making right turns, keep making right turns, keep making right turns. And you will eventually find your way out. You may not get everything, but you will find your way through the maze sooner or later. Um, also, Bron Bron is saying that he was uh, rejected and turned into a buddy of his crush. Um, I know that this doesn't necessarily help in the moment, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. You know, sometimes you're into somebody who's, you know, doesn't reciprocate. And even if it hurts in the moment, you, you sort of move on. And, and consider your next steps carefully, because if you... If you continue to insist, you can lose a really, really good friend. But if you um, accept that and move on and can make a friendship of it, like a genuine friendship, then you can have someone who winds up being in your life for a long time, if not in a romantic sense. I am looking forward to killing this man. We're going to burn through all the batteries until I burn through his darkness. God damn it. Get out of here, crows! I'm gonna die. 
side of the crows. Right, crows, you go away. Okay, now there's just one more problem. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Anything else up here? I'm concerned I don't have enough bullets. And very concerned that I just blew a battery for no reason. So, uh, for people like Pluzma who might be seeing this for the first time, uh, Alan Wake's battery uh, indicator is up there at the top left, but it actually recharges over time, or you can press Y to put long-lasting Energizer brand lithium batteries in there. Uh, they're the copper top, uh, they work really, really well, except that, of course, they last for about 15 seconds and then they go bad. So it's a really incredible, um, what's it called? Not promotion. Sponsorship? Whatever. Product placement. Hey, Energizer, we want to showcase how good your batteries are. They last for upwards of 60 seconds under absolute ideal circumstances. Let us put your branding in our game. Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was important. That made him better than Mott. But Mott was calling the shots now. He'd expected Wake to whimper and grovel, but instead, he seemed willing to fight. Mott knew he'd gotten under Wake's skin. If only Mott actually had his wife. The thought made him shiver. Okay, so Mott is the fake kidnapper then? He's the guy who got ripped apart? by the darkness, I guess. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit vague on who Mott is. I, I feel like I've, I'm, I'm on board with Barry and Hartman and Alice and uh, Rose, but, but Mott is kind of escaping me. Uh, and I would think the answer to what Kluzma said is, uh, he asked, what's with the girls who have many boyfriends but the relationships are usually really short? Well, I mean, they, like anyone, are probably looking for who is appropriate for them. And, you know, a valid dating technique is to date a lot of different people and a lot of different types of people and see what works for you. I'm got uh, yeah. Oh, and so, yeah, uh, sorry, I got off on the branding of the batteries. You can press Y to slam a battery in there immediately, or if you look up there at the top left right now, see how the battery is going back up? So, an alternative method is to preserve your batteries by just being judicious in how much you use the high beam. And I, and I will say this, in fairness to Energizer, I have not used Energizer brand batteries to kill many ghosts. So maybe they are still the best for that. Uh, also, I don't want this. All right, we killed the wheelbarrow. Gonna let my battery charge back up. Age. For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to climb back up. 
He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, an axe held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded. Uh, Pluzma is calling the flashlight a lightsaber for Alan Wake. Yeah, uh, and also I enjoy that comparison because it reminds me that of all the scenes where Luke Skywalker sw uh, swung his lightsaber three times and then had to stop to pop the batteries. <laughs> oh, that would have that would have really slowed down those lightsaber fights. Emil made Tom do it. Okay, Tom. Okay, Tom's the old writer, and I don't think I'm familiar with Emil just yet. Uh, by the way, if anybody hasn't seen it, I, I only just stumbled upon this for the very first time on YouTube. What was that called? It, um, Star Wars Reimagined, but what was the number to it? SC? Yes, SC38. Uh, when you guys have an opportunity... Uh, hold on. Maybe th this is probably like, super old and everybody knows about it except me. Uh, Hold on, I need more battery. Uh, I really wasted all my shotgun shells there. Uh, anyway, do a YouTube search for Star Wars Reimagined uh, uh, SC38. Uh, Sarah Cat 38. It's not perfect by any means like there's all sorts of moments where the the visual effects just sort of break right apart but in terms of like what people were able to do there without access to any of the original footage just sort of cutting around the original footage and then doing their own stuff pretty impressive uh and i and i uh, appreciate the amount of effort that went into it Uh, sorry, Bron Bron is describing a scene, and I need to. I want to read it, but I also want to get this. Sorry, I'm going to read this out loud because there's part of the embassy. In the scene where Luke was is going. Ham on Vader, the top they use in the lightsabers. So uh, Luke was barely in the video that I'm thinking of. The video that I'm thinking of was a uh, sort of a reimagined showdown between uh, elderly Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader in uh, what would have been episode four. And yeah, the, the visual effects were unsteady. But again, consider the fact that that's made entirely by fans uh, and they're not doing original work. They're attempting to integrate the costuming and the, the faces and stuff into um, old, arc old, you know, old footage from the original movie. Uh, and it's like, damn. Hold on, I threw some batteries on the ground. Don't know where they went. I did see the ominous figure down at the end of the lane. We'll go see him in a second. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded, no doubt. Oh, there's a blooper, okay. Back, he'd almost broken Hartman's nose the second time. But with a little time, he could break Wake down, give him proper direction. Wake was easily the most promising subject he'd had. Well, since Tom, really. Sleep well, Alan, Hartman whispered with a smile. Let me take care of you. He sniffed hard to clear his throbbing nose, swallowed blood, and barely tasted it. I hope that's another Hartman. I'm, I'm not necessarily done killing him yet. Oh, whoops. Okay, that's Barry. That was a good fake out. I thought that was a bad guy. Let's get out of here. Can you open this gate? Maybe. Barry. Uh, well, I slammed it shut when the nasty showed up, and the key fits kind of loose in the lock, so, uh... Hurry up! 
Barry. I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, hold on. Let me, um... Whoa! Hey! <coughs> Sorry. That was not the weapon I had in mind. I'm not sorry I used it, though. Okay, I deserve that. Oh, you stupid asshole. I heard him shouting, I found it. I'm talking about an Easter egg. Okay, he claimed to have found the T, so... Yep, there we go. You're now leaving Bright Falls. Come back soon, sign. We're going to the Anderson farm. I knew you were gonna say something like that. You know what? You owe me big time for this. When this is through, if we make it, I don't care what anybody says, I'm done with darkness. You're gonna buy me a tanning bed as a gift, and I'm gonna live in it. Uh, no, Pluzma, he couldn't have searched for the key because he was too busy spending that time loading the goddamn cardboard cutout into the back of the car. I'm crazy, but that's fine, Mary. <laughs> oh, you got that right, Al. You're barking mad. You are by far the craziest- But maybe that's inevitable when you deal with crazy stuff like this. It helps. This is happening, Barry. Alice, they never had Alice. She's trapped in the darkness at the bottom of the lake, but she's not dead. Al, how can you know that? I know, Barry, I can- Al, I- No, listen, I can bring her back. I can find her. There's something special about this place. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. But there's a catch. The dark presence, whatever that thing is, twists it to its own ends. That's why all of this is happening. It's using my manuscript to take over everything. Al, I believe you. It happened to Thomas Zane before. It happened to the Andersons. I believe you. Crazy or not, you're not delusional. Weird shit's going down. That's a fact. I'm on board, man. I'm with you. The Andersons knew about it, but they were too far gone to tell me with all the drugs they were on. But they wrote it down. There's a message somewhere at their farm, Barry. You just need to find it. Look out! my gun in the crash. Barry was nowhere to be seen. And more importantly, the cardboard cutout was missing. Barry! Barry! Oh, man, you're okay! Jeez, it's good to hear your voice! I was trying to get out of the car, but the ground gave way! Man, what a drop! Don't worry, your cutout is fine! God damn! Are you okay? <laughs> I hit some bushes, didn't get a scratch! There's no way you can climb down though! It's like a sheer wall! <laughs> okay, we're just, we're just going.
Barry, just wait for me, okay? Ow! I'm not staying here! It's suicide! I'm going to the farm! I'm gonna go ahead and secure the area! You can catch up! Don't worry about it! I'm on the case! Now he's Rambo. This would turn into a disaster if I didn't catch up with Barry. Uh, I think the controller's starting to drop a little bit. If, if that keeps happening, we'll, uh, we'll plug it in. want to go over here though okay that's enough yeah with no flashlight that wagon is just gonna kick the hell out of me okay over here we got a barrel sure Is there any chance there's anything of value? Nope. Okay, this is just death. This is just death. the Anderson farm, Walter felt relieved. Oblivion was close at hand. The brothers wouldn't miss a jar of moonshine or two in the booby hatch. But then he saw the man on the porch, and he knew who it was. Driving for his life and knowing it was useless, he didn't realize he was crying until he couldn't see the road for the tears. At this point, I will be amazed if there's not like an unlockable thing where you can play through the game as the cardboard cut out and it just sort of like glides along <laughs> little little flap goes up and down by the way is this it okay uh t time out for just one second because the battery keeps going bad let me go grab the cord Okay, this is why we don't have two people do this. I apologize. Okay, close enough. Um, sorry, so the question I was going to ask is, like, I came down here because I thought this was legitimately the way, but unless there's some other way to, you know, burst through this barricade, this does not appear to be the correct path. Man, and it seemed like it would be, doesn't it? Like, all the shelving was falling over. It was a really elaborate fake-out. Oh, thermos. Oh, man. Oh, I really want that coffee, though. Uh, most likely, yes, a flying minecart. What we're seeing here, Puzma, is that the darkness is able to possess random detritus and then throw it at Alan Wake. Although it is typically relatively easy to dodge as long as you can find some other physical object to get in the way. Uh, and that's not a great example. Yep, okay.
Now, normally you can kill the darkness infected objects by shining a flashlight at them, but at the moment, we're a little bit light. Sorry, that was an unintentional pun. We are out of lights. I'm gonna guess that there either is a light or we can find a light up there. Okay, nothing over here. Also, Bron Bron is saying that he's mad again. Uh, I am all ears. Okay, oh, manuscript page. You got me, game. I hope there'd still be a working generator somewhere around here to power up the old lights by the gate. If only there were some power cords nearby that I could follow along a long rickety boardwalk to lead me in the, along the pro proper path. Hold on. Agent Nightingale stared at the passed out rider. The man was sleeping off one hell of a night. Nightingale felt a stab of envy at Wake's oblivion, but he had a job to do. He put the gun to Wake's head and almost became a murderer. His hand shook and his throat felt tight and dry. Biting his teeth, he tried again to pull the trigger. He lost the nerve. Wake stirred. Nightingale would have to settle for an arrest. Did I actually fail a bridge, boss? What? First of all, what bridge? I, 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 mm, I don't want to miss an achievement, but... Boy, now I'm worried about, about this. Uh, on that note, there is exactly one achievement in... So in our previous episode, we were talking about the fact that uh, Fecrest has never played any of the Batman Arkham games. Uh, and on that note, there is one... Uh, spoiler-free achievement warning that I will give him when he does play them because it is uh, it is a missable achievement and it is the one achievement that I missed. Damn it. Oh, the bridge boss. Okay. <laughs> That's what they were referencing. Got it. But but it's, it's late in the game, so we will cover it when you actually do play it. Uh, huh. So I've got a light... But, okay, can I, like, turn this or something? Yes. Oh, whoa. Whoa! Hold on, we gotta let that chill out for a second. Sorry, I'm going to um, read a question from Plusma here. Decide from here, guys, if you can, please. I have a fully working keyboard and a mouse that spins out when I flick. Can't decide between a keyboard or a mouse. Well, if the question is why does the mouse spin out when you flick, it could be that mouse acceleration is turned on. That'll sometimes do some weird things. Alternatively, um, if the question is, should you replace a working keyboard or a weirdly not working mouse, the, the mouse, Placing for sure. Without a weapon was dangerous, but I had no choice. Okay, we have a flashlight. Hold on, trust no one in the dark. Yeah, if you've got a mouse, it's like weirding out randomly. Uh, time to replace that for sure. Oh, I don't want to fight them at all. Yep, that wasn't going to work. So, I have no batteries, and no gun, and five guys, and no flares. Oh, 
was a very inviting pool of light way the hell over there. We just ask these folks nicely to stand back. No, come on. I can't believe that worked. Now, the question was that I had, what what was that gener generator back there? If I go back there, are they all going to attack again? The generator is probably nothing, but... It's just, it's weird that it was out there and there was no realistic way to do it before they attacked. There it is. Okay, so that would have provided a safe zone but I'm not sure how much faster you can do that than what I did. Anyway, we got some extra batteries. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I would say, again, if the, if the keyboard works perfectly fine, a keyboard is a keyboard. You might like one design more than the other, but as long as it works and types and, you know, WASD, you're fine. If the mouse is flipping out, Time to give that a replacement. A car was driving away from the farm, headed in the same general direction as I was. For all I knew, it was Barry, caught in the consequences of leaping before looking. Uh, Brown Bond is asking why Alan Wake can't, like, you know, has no melee attacks. Well, probably for the same reason that he can't jog more than 20 feet without getting winded. He's, he's not in the best of shape. Yes, heavy duty flashlight. I mean, if he, if he, like, clubbed you with that flashlight, it'd probably be rather like getting hit with a towel. And not like a wet towel, just like a regular towel. The car was heading for the cabin up ahead. It wasn't far. If it was Barry... I would see the damage soon. Um, I think it was Pluzma was saying earlier about heavy rain. What is happening? I'm trying to deliver each page to the right time and place. I'm trying to show you how the story goes. I had seen glimpses of the light before. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange spaceman or a diver in a bulky suit. He was the one who'd been placing the pages on my path. Oh, uh, hey, have a great night, Bron Bron. Uh, and thanks for stopping by. Brown Brown's been uh, coming by for a few recent episodes, and and his uh, participation is always very welcome. So thank you very much. I fully support the Assassin's Fee uh, idea. I I really do. I think that would be a very very fun series for people. The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving like a storm from one scene of destruction to the next but it was still bound to follow the story and chained to the dark place it came from. When the story reached the end it longed for, it would finally be free. Um, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, yeah, see, we, we found all the pages. Wait, no, we haven't. By the way, uh, for the benefit of Plusma, the ones marked with the flame here uh, can only be found on Nightmare Difficulty Mode. 
Uh, sorry, to circle back real quick, Pluzma had mentioned Heavy Rain, and I wanted to call out that, um, although I have played Heavy Rain uh, and played it with my producer, we did a fun, like, a co-op thing where uh, we switched off for each character. Now, let me grab these. Um, so I was two of the characters, and she was two of the characters, and neither of us had played it, so we sort of switched off going through that, and... Um, it was a lot of fun, especially with some of the turns that that story takes. Uh, but we have been, or, you know, I, and I, I think Fee's on board with this as well. Uh, strongly recommending that twitch.tv slash more than Amiya play Heavy Rain. Uh, I think as narrative games go, I think that she'd have a lot of fun. I think it's a very interesting adventure. It's a comparatively brief game, so she could get through it in uh, just a couple episodes. And... For all of the flack that it gets, for all of its David Cage-isms, it is... Um, it's a story where I find it, I found it very easy to connect with the characters. Uh, so for anybody joining who isn't aware... Yeah, we haven't talked about Assassin's Fee in our Alan Wake series. Uh, before this series, we did... Um, a whole lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and during that stream, it became apparent that uh, Feecrest here has uh, doesn't like Assassin's Creed at all. So I do what I tend to do when I find out that somebody doesn't like something, which is to recommend that they do a lot of it and suffer for my entertainment. And that has brought up the idea of Assassin's Fee that we will hear about more in just a moment. The storm raged on as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the clinic with the other patients in tow, knowing that this time they wouldn't return. The darkness around them seethed with horrors, but Tor and Odin were unafraid. Their eyes glinted with guile. They knew every secret path, and there was blood on their hands. They had fought these shades before. Tor and Odin, by the way, are the old folks in the uh, mental asylum who beat a woman unconscious with a hammer, and Alan Wake finds them to be reliable sources of information for the truth of what's happening around here. Uh, also, I don't want to wander too much because that, like, glowing spot there is a bear trap. Uh, so Assassin's Fee is an idea where Feecrest will play all of the Assassin's Creed games starting, you know, in chronological order of release for... Uh, he'll play each of them for two hours, or until the title card. Someone had left a gun behind. Now I had a fighting chance of reaching the farm. Uh, two hours, or until the uh, opening title card, whichever comes second, whichever one of those two things takes longer. Wait, I don't think I read this. The Taken are filled with darkness. Thank you, Graffiti Man. Oh my gosh, Pluzma is making me feel very old. Pluzma had heavy rain on PS3 uh, when they were eight years old. <laughs> oh, and there's some scenes in there that might have seemed very uh, risque. Hold on, there's a bear trap there. I don't want to step on it. I can't back up. Oh, and so anyway, so uh, uh, Fee would play through each of the Assassin's Creed games, and then at the end, give us a summation of what what he would give us sort of a breakdown of the lore of the Assassin's Creed universe and what each of the games did differently or better, basically <laughs> informed exclusively by um, a very limited amount of time with each of them. Uh, and I think that it would be a lot of fun to sort of see him. And, and all of this would be streamed, by the way. Like, these would be a series of of episodes that would all be put together. Um, get to the farm, it says. I just want to make sure... I don't think there's anything else up there that I care about. The only the only trouble with uh, Assassin's Fee is that, you know, getting the games... Uh, if, if all the games are readily available, it's just a matter of time. And, and I think that, that would pass very quickly because it would be just fun to do. If they're not available even on sale. I mean, there's so many Assassin's Creed games. 
So I really want to get all these guys on the same side of me. And then preferably drop like a... Nope. Flare on them. Yep. I really got to remember that I get two shots. One. Reload. Is that... Damn it. So here's a question. Can we trick the shadows into going over the bear traps? Because that would be a fun trick. I'm getting a Resident Evil vibe here, where I'm not sure that there's enough ammunition in the world to deal with this if I decide to fight it. The other idea that we've had that I would... Damn it. Hold on. D Alan. Okay, they can't get me in the light. Even their shadow axes. Uh, we had an idea that is imminently doable to uh, sort of invent our own multiplayer version of Hitman or Hitman 2, which is going to be called Fee to Play. And I'd love to talk about it, except we may have reached the farm. I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. Oh, wow. Uh, Plusmus, sorry, I, I want to go into the house, but Plusmus uh, remembering when they were eight and had Resident Evil 5, which was the co-op one. Yes, that is the co-op one. Um, I... Hello? Anybody here? Ah! Barry! Ah! Ah! No! Danny, you're not... Ah! Please! Ah! What are you? What are you? Ah, no, don't! I'm sorry! Ah, ah, ah. Barry, I found the thermos and the shotgun shells. Do you want me to pick you up anything? Uh, I know you. You were in jail the other day. I went to the farm again for the moonshine, you know? It makes you see. They're they're not gonna miss it. They're in the loony bin. My buddy, Danny. I lost him. Something's gone wrong with him. It's not him. Like a real bad follow-up to a real good movie. The best friend's suddenly the bad guy. Who, who wrote this crap anyway? Hey, is he a guy in here named Barry? Oh, he's either passed out or dead. And based on the amount of blood underneath him, I'm going to go with passed out. I've run through every possible course in my head. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story, and it's going to kill her, and me, and everybody in this town. No one will survive. Darkness will consume everything. This is what it's wanted all along. It will be free, unstoppable. It used Alice to get to me, dangled her in front of me to keep me going. It was never going to release her. I'm going to change this. I'll escape. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. This feels like a terrible risk, but it's the only way to save Alice. I'll be bound by the events of the story just as much as anyone else who's been woven into it. The story must stay true for this to work. There have to be victims along the way. Near escapes. Cliffhangers. In a horror story, it can't be certain that the hero will succeed or even survive. He almost has to die. I'll write my own escape into the story next. I need help. 
Zane's going to be the one who will help me. I'll make it happen. Okay, so... Alan Wake, the guy that we are, is a fictional character. He's a he's a he's an author insert of Alan Wake, the real world author, who has written himself into his story because it's the only way to satiate the darkness and to engineer an ending where Alice is released. That is actually a pretty cool premise for a game. door was locked I'd have no choice but to go out the window the farm was still a good distance away I'd need a car to get there fast oh and again for the benefit of Plusma see that uh, yellow mark on the wall that's only there when you fly shine the flashlight on it those are sort of anti black light symbols that usually well always point the way to a deer carcass no uh, to a a cache of supplies. Do you want to keep an eye out for those? I, I feel like that also clarifies what the bright light is, by the way. That that is real-world Alan Wake. Live-action Alan Wake. Yeah, I really like the like some of the stylistic choices. Like the, the marks on the walls that only show up with your flashlight and stuff. Nope. Wait, can I... Go through here? No, that's windows way too small. If Barry wasn't up here, he was probably in trouble down at the farm. For a moment, I felt bad for doubting him. After all, I made it this far myself. But Barry was Barry. All right, so the marker tells me to pull a hard right. The me says that I want to follow that arrow to whatever it's pointing towards. But the camera is just flipping out here. All right, I'm going to pull in here. Yeah, Plusma mentioned earlier about uh, being sick right now. It's interesting to me about being sick is that, like, you... At least for me, I realize how much I take for granted not being sick. Like, when you're sick, when you got, like, that sore throat going, the headache, when you can't stop sneezing, or, like, you're sick to your stomach, it's like, man, I didn't feel like this three days ago. Why didn't I enjoy it more? <laughs> Which page was it do you think that Alan Wake wrote himself into falling down the stairs like a moron? Oh man, wouldn't that be a great thing? You know how at the end of like a game of Civilization or whatever, it shows you your timeline and like all the major events of the game? Wouldn't it be awesome if a game used a dynamic text generator, like AI dungeon or something like that, to write a narrative, like a like a like a written script, like it was a story of all the events that happened in the game, including like, you know. Alan walked off the path into the darkness in search of batteries. He tripped and fell <laughs> fell over a log, then jumped three times in the air and felt frustrated as his controller died. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm... I have no, like, reverse camera, by the way. He has no... You can't look behind you. You can only look to the sides.
well, I really don't want to get out of this car until all these folks are dead. Er. Okay, well, I don't want to go near the shadow broker there. So we're going to have to figure out what to do about this first. Sorry, one second. This is super loud. I'm not sure I can melt this, but I want to wait for my flashlight to recharge and give it a good go. All right. Uh, Alan Wake isn't much of an open world, but it does have certain levels where, you know what they feel like? They feel like the levels in, like, Battlefield Bad Company, where it's a level, but it's large enough that it can feel a little bit like an open world adventure. Yeah, you know, there's sections where you might get into a vehicle and drive for a short distance to cover some ground, but you're still kind of moving from point A to point B. A little bit like Crisis, the original Crisis. I want to go examine that house, assuming it's not some place I've been. The windmill doesn't look like it has anything to it, but we'll check. Nope, that is not a door. I will say this for Barry, if he's the darkness, or like a manifestation of the darkness, we've seen him in the daylight, you know, and there's other characters like, uh, there's a creepy old woman who only seems to exist in the darkness. Uh, but if it does turn out that Barry is a manifestation of the darkness, uh, we will hat tip the hell out of Pluzma, because he has called it. That, that's the thing, I sometimes, sometimes I want to like, say what my suspicion is, and other times I'm like, but is it, like, if I'm accidentally right, is it gonna feel like a spoiler for people, you know, because I sort of, like, ruin the surprise, even though I didn't really know? And usually I'll just say, like, hey, I'm going to make a prediction. Oh, nuts. I'm gonna make a prediction, I don't know if it's correct, but if you don't wanna hear my theory on this, you know, Hold on. I don't know where the other guy is. I will say, uh, the, uh, Barry would be a good, like, suit for the darkness to wear. Because he's a good friend of Alan's. And he's someone that Alan would not suspect. And it would be a lot more inventive than just having, like, Dark Alice, his wife or something. Yeah, no doubt. Barry is a weird dude for sure. His, his fascination for that cardboard cutout is... 
alternately really, really funny, but also very creepy. Like, imagine if somebody had that kind of fixation on a, like, totem of you. Yeah, I didn't have a, you know, much of an opportunity to respond to the second thing that Bron Bron said there. You know, that his, uh, his friend who uh, he felt had rejected him said, oh, well, I've got this other friend that you would get along well with, and that other friend, uh, as he, as Bron Bron put it, hates him. The hell? Oh, this is... Hold on. So the darkness has exhumed some bodies, some corpses, and are now throwing those at Alan Wake. Which I kind of admire. Sometimes you have to go to war with the detritus you have, not the detritus you want. You know, I, uh, what I was going to say about Bron Bron, I, you know, I don't know anything about that situation, but it sounds to me like maybe she's feeling a little bit bad and it's like, hey, there's other fish in the sea. Ultimately, you know, if you can find a way to forge a friendship out of that, you know, go for it and, and understand it's a friendship. There's no, you know, don't, don't like wait around in case it breaks apart. No, that's, it's gross and ugly. You know, if someone's not into you, it's cool, you know? There really are, you know, there's gonna be other people out there. Um, you know, find a way to move past it, or, you know, if it's better for you to wind up separating yourself from that person, so be it, you know, whatever's gonna be best for you, and, and go on. Yeah, but prior to this, again, we played um, Assassin's Creed, what is this? Oh, it's a firework! Will there be a scene where we sh shoot this up and, like, incinerate a lot of shadows by setting up, like, a really bright explosion in the sky? That would be awesome. I'd known the brothers used to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't really sunk in until I saw the stage. Al! Run! It's coming! There's too many of them! Damn. <laughs> I'm so glad you decided to go it alone, Mr. Carson. Shut up and shoot! Now We have to fight them all! I can tell up one the fireworks from here and help you out! I really want the heavy duty lan lantern. This place is stuck! I'm trying to get the stage lights on. I'm holding down nothing but B. There we go. Also, uh, I'm going to continuously talk because I'm very worried about this music again doing a copyright strike. One of the problems with any sort of licensed music in a game that you're trying to stream on Twitch is that if Twitch thinks it's licensed, if it even slightly believes it's licensed. Am I dead? Sorry, what I was going to say is that um, this sort of licensed music, uh, Twitch will default to simply muting like 20 minutes out of the broadcast. Shotgun. I'm trying, Al. Okay.
I, and sorry, I'm so focused on fighting that I'm actually not talking. So if this section of the broadcast happens to get muted, my apologies, and we will note it in the show notes for this episode. Uh, it's something that I've talked about a lot in the previous episodes because it is very frustrating when it happens. Really? Children of the Elder God! Enjoy it, God damn it! Okay, flare, flare! Damn it. Okay, hey, got a checkpoint. Wanna keep talking so we don't get that strike, but I also don't wanna to blather too much like a moron. Oh, you know what? Hey, as long as we're talking about music and I'm getting beaten to death. Hold on. Okay. What I was going to mention is that twitch.tv slash Tashir Games has a brand new album that just came out uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and you can pick that up at his band camp or uh, get directions to where it's available at twitch.tv slash Tashir Games. You can also check out his YouTube channel. If you do a uh, YouTube search for Tashir Rize, that's T-A-S-H-E-R-R-E, -R -R -E, and then Rize is R-I-S-A-Y. And he has a YouTube video up for Rain, which is uh, one of the songs on his album, Coney Island. I am so bad at this. No, no flares at all, huh? Do it for battery, please, please, please! I gotta get a lot more aggressive about using the, the batteries to keep the flashlight topped off. Well, we got an achievement for something. I assume it's dying multiple times in a single combat encounter. Yeah, I'm totally out of flares. Wait, what the hell was that? Oh, I have flashbangs! Yeah, I need to use those a lot more. Yes, flashbangs. Oh, I did not see you. Boy, uh, learning that I had a stock of flashbang grenades <laughs> really makes all those previous deaths feel unnecessary. Man, these farm boys know how to fucking party. <laughs> Bright Falls, rock and roll capital of America. Hey, Al! This way to the farm! Wait, 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 wait. Barry. There was a lot of stuff up here. Let's not leave any of it behind. Yep, shotgun ammo. So, and I got a pistol. I don't know if it's a revolver, but we're going to keep what we have. We got lots of ammo.
And I'm definitely going to keep my heavy duty lantern. Yeah, advice for uh, Plusma or Feecrest, Fox Eyes, anybody who goes to stream, if it has almost any kind of licensed music in it, be prepared to have part of that broadcast muted. And I've never contested it just because I don't necessarily feel like it's worth it. But if it happens, I do recommend noting in the show notes, like in the description that you give a video, um, hey, it's going to be muted from this time code to this time code, just so that people understand what happened. And we'll usually give a description See, of what seller, happened during no that time. Reason to worry. Your cutout's good as new, right where I left it. I'll come back for it once we have the place secured. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. Uh, sorry, timeout. A, the goddamn cardboard cutout is there. Uh, but B, um, thank you very much for participating, Pluzma. I'm, I, I legitimately hope that you feel better as the day uh, goes on and that you're able to get some sleep tonight. Uh, Pluzma previously said, previously said that it's like. Uh, now it's probably 2 a.m. where he is, so I hope that you start feeling better. We need to get this thing moved out of the way. This is as far as I got before they ambushed me. Okay, so we can get that out of the way using the winch, which goes inside the barn, and I bet that that bright, uh, prominent green light is going to be involved in getting it powered on. 3 a.m. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, feel free to lurk. Uh, when we're done playing, we're probably going to toss over to Toxic, who is going to be playing some uh, Sea of Thieves. But uh, as I like to point out, Toxic is one of the most ironically named people on Twitch. He's a great guy, very friendly, uh, awesome with viewers. I would highly recommend him. So if you wake up later and see him, uh, he's great company. I think you'll like him a lot. Okay. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend Barry to carry me. But that's okay. I can just take him for granted. I think I see what you did there. Yeah, it was pretty good. You want me to do my imitation of Barry Wheeler? No? Thought so. Wow. <laughs> you look at that thing out. They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? Look at all this stuff. They must have done okay for themselves. So how come I never heard of these guys before? And this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Anytime we see a uh, CRT television, I, you know, can't wait to see what, if anything, we get. This is so far the first chapter of the game that has not had... Uh, an appearance by the Spooky Door Show. Oh, wait, wait. They were playing a board game based on it. Night Terrors or whatever it's called. Well, what is the name of the fictional show that they keep showing? Oh, whatever it's called. Wait, that's not a... That's not a thermos out there, is it? Like, glowing from all the way over here? That's just a light. What is that? Sorry, it's probably nothing, but I just... It's really bright in the surrounding area, and I want to make sure it's not a page. It's a page! Deputy Mulligan tuned Thornton's chatter out. He didn't think writers were particularly useful people, and a huge manhunt for one stuck him as idiotic. Certainly not worth the missed opportunity for coffee and pie. It wasn't even clear what the man had done, except run from them at the trailer park. Mulligan knew he wasn't alone. The sheriff's patience with the Fed was running out. Boy, that is some awesome draw distance. I saw that from way the hell out there. Like, nothing in the game glows like that. What, what, what is that? Oh. Sleep. We all spend oh, 
Prince, so man. Bright. Somewhere it's between memory. fantasy and Hey, oblivion. remember when I got you that gig? But your first real writing job. What got you started? Life. Was this one of your episodes? In Night Springs. I'm not kidding. I really do want to stand there and watch it, but I'm, I'm not sure how long they are. And also, I'm not I'm not sure that watching someone watch a show is the best entertainment for streaming. OK, we are packed on batteries, ammunition, guns, flashbang grenades, flares uh, and patience for Barry. So I'm going to head upstairs. From one of the worst, like, uh, I don't know if you call it like a cold. Wait, hold on one second. It's 1976. Madness reigns at the Anderson farm. Contrary to all logic, the headiest ingredient of their moonshine is unfiltered water from Cauldron Lake. The Andersons feel like gods. Odin can't stop laughing. He contemplates cutting his eye out. Tor runs across the field, naked, shrieking hammer in his hand trying to catch lightning their songs have power something ancient is stirring in the depths coming back uh so if he is recommending world of world of warcraft uh i will check that out i'm not familiar with it the viking boat looked imposing almost like a battering ram okay but what do i want to batter this is a barn we can just walk around it if we want to oh are we gonna use this to go across the lake okay I'm not gonna read all the cities on their Ragnarok tour Although apparently they're going to new, a place named New York City, New York, which I suspect is a reference to Max Payne, another Remedy game. Oh! I thought I could get past without a uh, baseball Batman catching, but time to make use of some of that. Nope. <laughs> We have all this ammo. Oh, wait, I have to press the button again. There was a really good video, which I have had a lot of difficulty finding, and I actually showed it to Mia years back. It was a video, it was a World of Warcraft video, and it was made by someone who had been, um, like, thoroughly addicted to the game to the point of... you know, eschewing other forms of social entertainment and just sort of putting all of his time, effort, and money into World of Warcraft. And after traveling to, I think, another country to meet with his video game girlfriend who, you know, they, they got together briefly, but then she started dating somebody else from the game instead, and it turned out to be a really, like, hollow relationship. Um, he started to re-examine his life and set his character aside and focus on doing things that, that he enjoyed in real life. And the video was very well told. It was very well edited. And I absolutely cannot find it again. Uh, one of the things that he talks about is that his character that had meant so much to him was still there. But um, it was as though they were frozen in time, uh, remaining changeless while the entire rest of the world went on around him. And... I just, like, that section of it always stuck in my mind, and I, I I cannot find the video anymore. If I could remember the name of the guy's character, or, or his name, I'm sure it would come right up, because it was very, very well made. 
Hopefully we got all the ammo. There's going to be a guy who comes up behind me now. Yeah, a little busy, Barry. I haven't run from one of these guys yet. I'm not even sure that I could. And, and it's one of those things where I don't even remember where I originally heard about that video. So it's not like I can go back to the source and see if I can find it there. Um, I'm 90% sure that it was on YouTube. I just, yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, man, where did I ever hear about that? You know what I still have a lot of? There's so many guys behind me right now. I'm trying to dodge. Ooh, okay. The MMO that I really got into was Star Wars The Old Republic. That's the one MMO that I not only played to the end game, I played to the end game on two separate occasions and then like 75% of the way through with the third character just because I enjoyed the mechanics of that game so much. had quite a production going on. Oh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm going to start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. Hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm going to take a closer look at this stuff. Uh, in Old Republic, there were two factions, much like World of Warcraft, you know, the Federation, not Federation, the Republic and the Empire. They might have been called something slightly different. And I played all the way through as a, a, a mercenary. No, 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 no. Uh, a, a Republic soldier, Republic commando. That was my first character. Uh, and my producer played all the way through as a Jedi guardian, I believe, uh, and tanked for the team. Then I played all the way through with my friend H.W. Wait, hold on. Getting Dark Souls here. Okay, I'm good. Keep your eyes open, okay? Uh, as a Sith Inquisitor, which was the, you know, Imperial race that uh, or Imperial class that fought with like the, the dual-sided lightsaber, which I thought was going to be a little bit too on the nose, but what made the Old Republic work so well for me was the strength of the single-player character story. Every character in the game has their own like class-specific story that sort of leads them through the entire adventure, takes them from world to world, gives them uh, class contacts that they talk to, and I just found it very easy to engage with and whether or not that it dialogue decision decisions that you make have a great impact on the way that the story unfolds or not well I have a heavy duty lantern right yeah I think that's in case I missed the last one yeah as you regular listeners know I tend to work through the night but I'm not the only one Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, 
How busy are you now? Deer Fest is almost here, isn't it? I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Deer Fest? Actually, we've been real busy with other stuff. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. Yeah, the, so the, the radio host there recently had a bullet pass within four inches of his head as it went whizzing through the glass of his studio, fired by a federal agent. The fact that he's asking the cops about Deer Fest and if that's what's keeping him busy lately, got an interesting choice of interview topics. All right, we are good on batteries. see the building that had to be the Anderson's home on the other side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods. B to kick. Okay, anything back there? I feel like it's been a minute since I found any pages. I hope I haven't wandered past too many of them. Okay, there's a 100% chance that this threshing machine is going to get infested by darkness and chase us through this field. Just so you know. So, Alan, can you, like, close the door? No, of course not. Yep. <laughs> I think the Thresher is going to take care of those guys. It doesn't seem too discriminate on what it runs through. bouncy ball that we saw earlier, I don't think we're going to be able to convince that thing to smack to the gate, because if it was going to do that, it would do it already. So the question is, what am I missing in terms of dealing with this thing? Oh, boy! Okay. Wait, we might actually be able to melt this thing. Uh, no! Hey man, I just blew up a thresher with my flashlight. What options do you think you have? Okay, the fact that he came out of here makes me think this is the place that we're going. Yep, I do see the ladder. Just want to make sure there's nothing down here to get. Nope. You would expect this for a game that relies so heavily on, you know, a flashlight for its, you know, combat and navigation and such, but the lighting effects in this really are very well done. Alright, that's clearly where we go. I just want to see if there's anything else around. Uh, sure doesn't look like it.
Okay. Silo keys. Check. Dead ends. Check. So, Barry's back at the silo, right? There's no, like, I can't flip any of these fuses or anything. I just have sort of one question. I'm not necessarily sure. Uh, Al? Is that you out there, buddy? Yeah, it's me. Hang on. There we go. Hey, let's go, man. Uh, I didn't leave anything in here in terms of pick upables. Probably not. On the other side of the field we're almost there this farm is a crazy place for crazy people we should feel right at home then it's pretty cool of alan not to offer barry a gun come on one more gig let's do this thing. Uh -huh. old gods know the truth true that Are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. I gotta say, you know, all sarcasm aside, these guys were living the dream. Hanging out in their farm, playing their music, you know, doing their pyrotechnics. And a pretty good thing going. Yeah, you know, it's a shame about getting committed to the loony bin, the uh, the asylum there, getting drugged and having to beat some woman to death with a hammer. That's all not so great, but all right. Toilet coffee, my favorite blend. Hey Barry, I want to look upstairs. Barry. Oh, Barry. This place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were in the booby hatch. Yeah. Come on, Al. Let's get I don't the light on. Oh, stupid. The okay. Point. They seem to slip away a lot so they can get wasted. No kidding. Those guys sound awesome. So, do you think that there is a way downstairs inside the house, or is it a storm cellar situation? We got to go outside. Barry, will you... Oh, wait. Now I can get upstairs. Aha. Nope. Oh god. Alan Wake's real American nightmare is getting trapped in one of these bedrooms because Barry walks into the doorway and he can't dislodge him. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin, flashlight in my hand. I followed my past self. I was an out-of-body observer, a time traveler in a crazy drunken dream. This was the beginning. The night Alice had disappeared. The mystery of what had happened during the missing week was about to reveal itself. Uh, and also, hello to He Who Dies and, and anyone who stopped by with his channel. We are in episode four of Alan Wake, which I would guess puts us roughly halfway through the game. Now, they said this was going to be upstairs. Sorry, downstairs. Uh, hi, Def9. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't... For some reason, the chat that I'm currently monitoring on our phone did not inform me that a raid had happened. Of course. We need to find where it's coming from. That's the message the Anderson's talking about. That's the whole reason we're here. Lady of the Light? That's gotta be... What's your face? The crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right. Must be. Yeah, he who dies. Yeah, thank you very much for the raid. I hope you have a great evening, and uh, you are welcome to chill anytime. So we can play the radio. Sorry, play the record. The record's probably just a little dusty. Give it a little thump. I want to hear this song. Okay. Oh, maybe this is where it's coming from. Got it.
Oh boy. If we make it through this series without a copyright strike, I'm gonna be really impressed. Okay? We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey, Al. Lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry. This is... Yeah. What the hell? I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. If I just wanted to, I could write ten books a year. And and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What do they put in this stuff? I feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off of those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. I just miss her, Barry. I just want her here with me. I know, Al. I know. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay. Wait, I am disembodied. Alice, I'm coming. It's all right. I'm coming. It was a crazy drunken dream. And yet, it was more than that. It was the truth. A suppressed memory unearthed by the Andersons' moonshine. I was there, an out-of-body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls. The night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. I remember being surprised to see the cabin Alice? dark. Alice. Alice would have never turned the lights off. I remembered thinking I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. Beyond this lost memory, there was nothing. I had to follow the footsteps of my past self to find out what had happened that night. Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice. and so she had me. Alice! <coughs> I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. This is as fast as I float, by the way. There's no uh, ghost sprinting. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me, made me her puppet. She must be here somewhere, maybe upstairs in this study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. Alice! You'll laugh at the whole thing together and put it behind you. Alice? She's not here. 
You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. Oh, those windows are the two circles. You can write okay. Her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice, and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I'm here. It will be back soon. She stole the skin of my heart a long time ago. She looks so old. I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. It had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> There's an altar with mystery of Tom so again, uh, blah, 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 copyright. I'm gonna have to skip this. Uh, I can assure you that if I was playing this uh, you know, on my own, had the luxury to um, sort of sit. I would sit and listen to this entire song, and I'd watch all those videos of Spooky Door and all this, all the rest. But uh, in this case, in order to try to preserve the integrity of our stream, we will have to Previously skip. Previously on Alan Wake, under the influence of the dark presence, I wrote a horror story that is coming true. Jagger had been my editor, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. Some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story. Together, we can create something absolutely wonderful. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. My mom gave me this old light switch. The clicker. Alice is being kept in a dark prison. I need to find Cynthia Weaver to fix this. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. 
Well, we're expecting a record crowd from the neighboring counties. Naturally, we hope to break the record set by last year's Moose Fest in our neighboring town, Watery. Ladies and gentlemen, some people have asked me, what's the big deal about Deer Fest? And I think that this sums it up. It's about friendship and community. We've got a great party coming up, though. Uh, let's try to hold it in until tomorrow and get through the night in one piece, all right? Someone will come for it when the time is right. Thomas said so. He wrote it. The key is insurance. It's my job to keep it safe. Safe in the light. Or is it a light? All the manuscript pages were gone. The FBI agent had taken them. I think... I think my tongue just took a crap in my mouth Ugh. okay and on that note i think that that's a great place to break uh, i have to say that if anybody was wondering at what point the story of island wake won me over uh it was this episode um i wasn't sure what to make of the mystery and i feel like the framing device that we've now been introduced to uh and again for anyone who came over and he who dies we're we're fairly deep into Alan Wake here, so apologies because I do want to sort of sum up what I think is happening. Uh, Alan Wake, Barry, the cops, the FBI agent are all fictional characters in a story that Alan Wake, the real world writer, wrote in kind of a fugue state. So in terms of why they're also broad, weird parodies of the way that an actual person would act, it suddenly all makes sense in a way that I actually think is very clever and interesting. So um, I would say if there's one comment that I have about the game so far, it's that I really regret the fact that we don't get a chance to explore Bright Falls under the, the break of day. Um, I feel like it's missing that element of deadly premonition where you get a sense of who these people are and what the town is like in the daytime, as well as during these night sequences where you have to shoot all the terrible zombies. Um, I'd really love to see a version of this that is more of an open world adventure where you have the ability to travel around and talk to the people as part of solving the mystery. That's not the game that they made, just thinking out loud about what I might want to see from an Alan Wake 2. But we're not done yet, so we will be back for an episode 5 of Alan Wake. Until then, yeah, we don't have to do anything to... Nope. Just, uh, confirm to quit. Okay, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us for episode four of Alan Wake, and we are going to be tossing over to a very good friend of the stream. Uh, hopefully he is still on. We'll just double check here before committing. Uh, let me make sure that it doesn't come on too loudly. Yes, so we are going to toss over to Toxic, the most ironically named man in all of Twitch. Uh, he's currently just sort of relaxing with his crew, but I suspect that they will be out on the high seas and doing another adventure in a short amount of time. Until next time, I want to thank you so much, and we'll see you again for some more Alan Wake later in the week. I hope that you will check out twitch.tv slash Tashir Games, more than Amiya, JV McMaster, and so many others, and He Who Dies, so many others who you can now find directly linked just below the video that you might be watching here on Twitch. We have revamped that section uh, to hopefully make it as easy as possible to find so many of the uh, streamers that we have come to know over the last year. Until next time, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great night.